In this video, I want to show you a little tool I made to experiment with how geography can affect the size and shape of states. Nothing fancy, but I think it points to some interesting patterns. I will use it to see if we can recreate some historical states such as the Roman Empire or simulate the reach of the Viking raids. But first, an introduction. I am fascinated by how different states in different times and places can look. You have the Roman Empire, which ruled most of Europe in the 2nd century, the Carolingian Empire in the 9th century, and the gigantic Mongol Empire in the 13th century. But in some places, you instead of fragmentation into a myriad small states, such as here in Germany after the Third Year's War in the 17th century, it's a mess. Social scientists and historians increasingly point to geography as shaping politics. In this book, for instance, historian Walter Scheidel argues that the Great Asian Steppe is the reason for why Asia has had so many large empires, the Chinese and the Mongols, whereas Europe haven't after the fall of Rome. You can't defend a steppe, so people are vulnerable to conquerors with cavalry. In Europe, on the other hand, the more varied geography made it easier for smaller states to survive. For instance, the Swiss and their mountains were never really conquered by the Habsburg emperors. One famous battle in 1315, the ambushed a column of knights literally rolling down rocks on them from above. I wanted to see if we can simulate the reach of states by varying features of the geography. The main idea is that the areas that you can reach faster from a capital are easier to conquer and are therefore more likely to be included in an empire. I started with a map of Europe and added data on where there are rivers and mountains. So we have four types of terrain, land, sea, river, mountain. With this tool, we can vary the speed on each of these terrains like this. Using this information, I have used an algorithm that calculates the fastest routes between points on this map. If we place a capital somewhere, like near Rome, we can see how easy it is to travel to different places from there. More yellow means easier, more purple means harder. The settings right now are that C is the fastest mode of travel, so the Mediterranean is yellow. But if we change it so that C is slower and land is faster, we get a different picture. We also have rivers. They are fascinating because they are both important waterways when you travel along them, but they can also be barriers if you try to cross them. Some countries like Egypt are concentrated along a river, everybody lives along the Nile, while other rivers like Rio Grande between the USA and Mexico constitute borders, barriers. In this simulation, that double effect is represented by the fact that we have a travel speed for rivers, which is when you go along the rivers, we don't care if it's upstream or downstream, and you also have this mode change speed slider. This represents the cost of changing mode of travel from sea to land or from river to uh, land. If we set this to really low and river travel speed to also really low, then we get this barrier effect. We will see it here by there being sort of shadows uh, when we try to uh, cross the rivers. But if, if we instead increase this to really high, no penalty of uh, changing mode of travel, and we increase river speed to really high, then we will get another pattern. Then we will see that we get sort of more yellow around the rivers. We can make it even more clear if we do it like this, so that it's advantageous to use the rivers uh, for transport. We can see it even more clearly if we put down another capital like something over here, then we get the shortest distance between or the best route between these capitals. And now we can see that it really follows the rivers. But if we instead again pull down river, uh, river travel speed and we redraw it, then we now see that uh, it chooses another path that sort of avoids all these barriers and go by sea instead. And we can also put down more capitals, then we get the sort of best routes between all of them. And we can vary the parameters. Let's increase land travel speed quite a lot. Then it will probably use land more, but will not go across uh, along the rivers. And increase rivers as routes. It's better to go by rivers now. If we switch to the empires tab here we instead uh, of the routes between the capitals get the sort of territory around the capitals it works by assigning the closest hexagons to 
each capital, uh, in this case uh, 300. Let's uh, uh, vary the parameters a little bit. Let's pull up uh, sea speed and let's pull down uh, land speed a little bit and uh, have it redrawn. So it designs the closest hexagon in terms of uh, travel speed. Uh, and when there is now little competition, they are in sort of different places, these empires, they will not, uh, all territories will be uh, 300 uh, hexagons uh, in size. Uh, the Habsburg one was only 298. But if we increase the maximum empire size, like to the max, 1000 hexagons, then there will be sort of competition for them and each hexagon will be assigned to the capital that is the closest in terms of travel speed. Let's put down uh, another one over here like the Plantagenet in uh, Britain and let's also put down something in uh, Germany. It's a bit slow, uh, I'm not that great at coding, so please excuse that. And now we can sort of see these empires forming. Here, when we have this mode change speed set to really low, we get sort of borders al along the rivers because it sort of costs uh, to, uh, to cross them, which is also what we see in real life, of course. So let's now start over with the default settings, uh, which is uh, really high sea travel speed, slightly lower land travel speed, a boost from uh, rivers and uh, uh, low speed on mountains and uh, a sort of heavy cost of changing uh, travel. And let's now change the name of this empire and uh, let's see if we can sort of with these parameters get something that looks like the empire. Of Rome and that will sort of allow us to get an explanation for the shape of the actual uh, Empire so what we have here is when we have it set to 300 we get most of Italy and the coasts along the Mediterranean if we increase the Empire's size here to 500 we get uh, a bit more territory around the Mediterranean primarily Let's increase it all the way to a thousand. Now we get an empire that covers the entirety of the Mediterranean, which is also what happened in real life. If we compare this simulation to an actual map of the Roman Empire at its greatest extent, it's kind of similar, which I think shows that the sea was not a barrier in those days, but rather an important mode of transport that tied the empire together. Starting over again, I want to see if we can get something that looks like the pattern of the Viking raids. And I want them to have a high travel speed on sea and also very high travel speed on rivers and lower on land, but not perhaps not that much lower. And then we place the Viking capital. Let's put it in Denmark and see what we get. Which were the areas most easily reached using that. And we get uh, Denmark, uh, southern Sweden, uh, Norway and also Britain, northern France. And these were areas where there were a lot of uh, Viking raids and also northern Germany. We can increase the empire size a little bit and increase river travel speed because that was really what the Vikings were good at going up rivers. And let's see how that looks. And we get more reach along those rivers. I don't know if we can go up river from these, but I think it's interesting to see. And if we put the capital here in Uppsala, we get a more emphasis to the east here. And if we go to this roots uh, tab and we now put something uh, the Byzantines and we put them in Constantinople, which we know that the Vikings were there then we can see that this sort of suggests uh, 
a route which uh, follows this river down to the Black Sea and to the Byzantines. And though it's hard to know for sure, I think there seems to be some evidence to suggest that they actually did take this path, which I think is interesting. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. The simulation is online and you can play with it. Please let me know uh, if you find something interesting or see some explanation for an historical pattern or something like that. It's kind of slow, but uh, it's the first time I've done something like this. So give me some rope here. And if people think this is interesting, I can also adapt this uh, project to include other geographical regions such as the Americas or Asia, if people are interested. And if you like uh, my work, please uh, like and uh, subscribe to the channel for more content such as this.